Our service this morning is the service of morning prayer for Tuesday, the third week of Lent. And our service begins on page four of the Book of Common Prayer. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice onto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed to much the vices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of his salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as on that day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
The psalms appointed for this morning's service is Psalm number 30 and Psalm number 32, found on pages 363 and 366. I will magnify thee, O Lord, for thou hast set me up, and not made my foes to triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Thou, Lord, hast brought up my soul from hell. Thou hast kept my life from them that go down to the pit. Sing praises unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks unto his holy name. For his wrath endureth but the twinkling of an eye, and his favor in his life. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. As for me, in my prosperity I said, I will I shall never be moved. Thou, Lord, of, the goodness, of thy goodness, hast made the, my heel so strong. But thou didst turn thy face from me, and I was troubled. Then cried I unto thee, O Lord, and gat me to my Lord right humbly. What profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, shall the dust give thanks unto thee, or shall it clear thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned my heaviness into joy. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness that my soul may sing of thy praises without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed is he, whose unrighteousness is forgiven, and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord inputteth no sin, and in whose spirit there is no guile. For while I held my tongue, my bones consumed away through my daily complaining. For thy hand was heavy upon me day and night, and my moisture was changed as with the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sins unto thee, and I my and my I righteousness have I not hid. I said I will confess my sins unto the Lord. And so thou forgavest the wickedness of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly make his prayer unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. When the great waters overflow, they shall not come nigh him. Thou art a place to hide me in, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will inform thee and teach thee in the way wherein thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eye upon thee. Be ye not like to, to horse and mule, which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held with bit and bridle, else they will not come nigh thee. Great plagues remain for the ungodly, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord, 
Mercy embraceth him on every side. Be glad, O ye righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. And be joyful, all ye that are true of heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is written in the book of Exodus, chapter 13, beginning at the 17th verse. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that war was near. For God said, lest the people repent when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people round by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had solemnly sworn the people of Israel, saying, God will visit you, then you must carry my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Sukkoth and encamped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Piathoroth, between Middol and the sea, in front of Belesavion. You shall encamp over against it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people have fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants it was changed towards the people, and they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him, and took six hundred picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel as they went forth defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamped by the sea by Pehetheroth in the front of Balasiphion. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were in great fear. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we, we said to you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. 
the Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be still. Here endeth the first lesson. Continuing now with the Deum on page 7 of the Book of Common Prayer. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Our second lesson is written in the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Chapter 5. I beg your pardon. Chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, in Hebrew called Bethsaida, which has five porticles. In these lay the multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew that he had been laying there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is troubled and while I'm going another step down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your pallet, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his pallet and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, Is it the Sabbath? Is it not unlawful for you to carry your pallet? But he answered him, them, the man who healed me said to me, Take up your pallet and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your pallet and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, and as there was a crowd in the, in the place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse befall you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. And there was, and this was why the Jews persecuted Jesus, because he did this on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is working still, and I am working. This was why the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also called God his Father, 
making himself equal with God. And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever he does, the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him that you may marvel. For as the Father rises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges not no one, but, his, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, a born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants, and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all our enemies. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthy of lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of the God of all mercy perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth the eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings will be ordered by thy governance, to do always set us righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the commonwealth, and all set in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of thy holy name, and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant us, O Father, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold a faith in the unity of spirit and in the bond of peace and in the righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed of those in mind, body, or estate. especially for whom our prayers are desired. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their suffering and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We, be, we bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world for our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and by, for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up of ourselves to thy service, and walking before and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom of thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.